weight. <laughs> All the show ups. Yeah. In a book entitled Chicken Soup for the Veteran's Soul, there's a quote from Will Rogers, the celebrated playwright and comedian. He said, Not everyone can be a hero. Somebody has to stand on the curb and applaud as they walk by. That quote was with me when I volunteered for the USO, the United Service Organization. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about the USO, because it means so much to me, and it's changed my life experience. I'm going to talk to you about the USO and its history. I'm going to tell you why I joined the USO. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the first night I volunteered, the food that we fed the troops, and the reaction to it. First, a little bit about the USO. The USO was chartered by the U.S. Congress over 67 years ago. However, it is not a government organization. It is a privately funded organization that survives on the donations made by private citizens like you and me. Uh, they do a lot of different things for the troops and their families. Uh, they provide care packages for troops deploying overseas that include toothbrushes, razors, toothpaste, mouthwash, reading materials, decks of cards, even a granola bar. Uh, they provide community centers for military members and their families where they can gather and have celebrations. They provide airport centers where traveling military members and their families can get a hot meal, sleep in a warm bed, take a shower, do their laundry, get on the internet, make a phone call, watch TV, anything they want for absolutely free. They also have their mobile canteens, made famous by Bob Hope and his USO shows overseas. They can go anywhere in the world where the troops can be entertained, fed a hot meal, just like home. Now, I've told you a little bit about the USO. I'd like to tell you why I volunteer. I was never a member of the military. This is important because every male member of my family, going back to the American Revolution, has served in the military, with the exception of myself and my two younger brothers. When I told my mom about the speech, she's the family genealogist, she pointed that out to me, along with the whole family tree. He was in the military, he was in the army, he was in the navy, he was a marine. And it embarrassed me, because I feel so strongly about this country. I wanted to make a difference, especially after 9-11, as many Americans did. They were hurt and angry and wanted to fight back. Unfortunately, at that time, well, fortunately, at that time, I had a young family, and it wasn't a sacrifice I was willing to make. Then last month, I saw an ad on television. The local USO chapter was looking for volunteers, and I volunteered. That's how I got there. My first night last month, it was June 2nd, I received an email from MJ Flammer. She is the manager of operations at Fort Dix and McGuire Air Force Base for their USO charter. She critically needed volunteers for that night. 240 members of the 50th IBCT, the Infantry Brigade Combat Team, were coming back from Iraq that night. And they were expecting about 1,500 people. And they had a lot of food to serve. So after confirming with my wife that I could go. I got dressed and I went. MJ met me at the gate of Fort Dix in order to check me in. Unfortunately, I had not yet gotten my credentials. We got on base, and driving through base, you can see large memorabilia of every war that the U.S. has been in. There's a tank over here, an APC, APC over here. Over there is a Huey. And if you get over to McGuire Air Force Base, there's planes everywhere. It's amazing. And if you get a chance, you really need to visit. Once we got to the hangar, you could find a volunteer any direction you looked. The Salvation Army was over here with their mobile canteens. They were doing the grilling of the burgers. Over here, the Girl Scouts were handing out their famous cookies. Campbell Soups from Camden, New Jersey actually sent several volunteers to work with the USO to serve food. And there was a lot of food. We had potato salad. Uh, pasta salad, green salads, fruit salads, you name a salad, we had it. Condiments, cookies, cakes, lettuce and tomatoes for the burgers and the cheeseburgers. And we had hot dogs. I missed the slide. Don't you do that? <laughs> we had hot dogs. We had everything for the hot dogs. We had sauerkraut. 
we had chili, we had mustard, we had ketchup, it was glorious. To me, though, it was woefully inadequate. We were welcoming home 240 people that for the last 12 months had put their lives on hold and spent it defending my freedom and my family and the freedom of the Iraqi people. And here we were giving them hot dogs. I was embarrassed, truthfully, I was embarrassed. But it didn't last for long because from outside we heard a cadence being called and the stopping of boots as the troops marched across the tarmac into the welcoming arms of their families. There were tears and there were cheers of joy as these men and women came home. And after a short while, I was standing in front of my hot dogs waiting for them to come inside after the greeting. And standing in front of me was a soldier who truthfully was probably not old enough to drink yet and could have been my son. Probably not, but he was old enough. And I looked him in the face and I said, welcome home, soldier. Would you like a hot dog? And this was the response I got. Holy crap, they got hot dogs. Hey, Jerry, I told you they'd have hot dogs. Sir, please, could I have four? Do you mind? I mean, could I really? Oh, man, I haven't seen a hot dog in over a year. Can you believe it? The only meat we could get was chicken. Honest to God, that was the response I got. I'm standing there feeling badly about serving these people hot dogs, not realizing that these guys and girls had not seen a hot dog for over a year and how much it would mean to them. MJ, the the manager I had mentioned before, told me that night that our chapter of the USO feeds over 1,500 pounds of hot dogs to soldiers incoming and outgoing every month. And hot dogs, by far, are the number one favorite food of the troops. I had no idea. So tonight, I told you a little bit about the USO, about its history. I told you why I decided to join the USO. I told you about my first night, the food that we served, and how happy it made those troops to get it. If you take nothing else away from my speech, please remember this. The small things mean the most. Two words, thank you, and maybe just a hot dog. My name is Jim Thomas, and I am very honored to be a USO volunteer. Thank you very much.